here with the second part on the painting tutorial of Abaddon uh, the spoiler and here I'm going to uh, paint I will uh, most likely will going to be divided in different parts as you can see the Abaddon is not glued uh, we have done the base in the first part and I have the different parts there but the one thing I want to do I, can, I need to do first is I need to apply black again with the brush as you can see that the spray as I prime it with the cape on and so on did not reach all the parts so I'm going to use a bit of black you can use any black that you want it we have we have to thin it down a little bit and we try to be careful not to be too chucky okay and not to cover any detail so we want to apply this and the reason is as I'm going to use this uh, in case we need to do a correction and of course you need, I need the here to be black so uh, I will apply this on all over the, the miniature here okay and I will be back once this is done and dry so I can do the next step so once the black is applied I mean when we have a uniform black as you know it's looking much better uh, I'm going to apply now some highlights on the black part of the armor and I'm going to use a mixture of purple and blue to do this highlight so we'll start now with Nagarot and Night I think this is a very dark purple and um, in my opinion work very well on top of black so what we are going to do is we are going to first if we have a damage like this one here we are going to go at the bottom part of the damage part. And you can see that it's going to be very subtle what we are doing here. Okay, and now we are going to not do the full border, but we are going to follow part of the border of the arm. here at the bottom Chaos Armors can be sometimes quite a challenge to highlight because we don't have for example here what I will do is I will just do a vertical highlight Slot here, okay, and you can see it's super subtle now. This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for something that is not that noticeable doing these highlights. So we are going to do here for example this leg follow like that like that here we are going to follow the border of this protection I will, I think in this middle I will work it by zones instead of trying to work all the parts I mean I will try to work not to do all the purple so I'm going to really work on the highlights on this area so once I have applied the blue I think the next color I will apply I think I will highlight it with purple I think it will look nice on purple I will use then uh, shadows purple okay and we are 
going to play this. So what I want to do here is to it something like that is what I want now we're going to use the narrow night to clear to clean up like that now the shadows purple a little bit between to go. Let's do the shoe for the boot. Hey, this one I will put shadows purple here like that. Not shadows purple, sorry. Now night and no shadows purple. Especially this change here. So never night. So we always apply never night is the dark one and now she has purple to do the bright highlight. So within the shadows purple and the Nagara Night I will be highlighting this black. Okay, to give the sensation of really for example here. The one I'm going to do in this one edge highlighting.
we don't need we, we just balance how much I like with it we want in each part okay for example it's a very hidden part I don't want to put too much uh, purple and I will keep working on that so no different parts of so this bot bad part So we'll keep working on the black and I come back once this is done. So this is how it looks like when we have done this. Uh, it's quite a subtle highlights on with purple. But now I want to do the rim of the armor and all the brass golden parts. So I'm going to use Retributor Armor. This is a great base and especially works perfectly on top of black. And we are going to do all these, all the rims of the armor. Okay, so we want it to be as well as thin as possible. I will do as well all this type of teeth. I will think I will do them all in gold. So I'm going to apply this on all the rims. I will also do the spiky thing he has at the back. Okay, and I will do as well the shoulder patches too. So I will, I will do all these rims, including, and I will do as well the chaos symbols, all the parts that you want in brass. Okay. And when this has done, I'm back for the next step. But to be fair here, there is not much to say, it's just, I apply Retributor Armor. I think it's a great gold to work on black. Okay, so you can see we'll do as well the chaos symbols here. And I will paint this face after that one. Okay, so I do that and I come back for the next step. So this all looks like once we have done all the gold parts. So I did here the weapon. I have done all the trimming on the armor. Okay, I also did the shoulder parts, right? And I have done as well the, the claw. Okay. So the next step I'm going to work on is on the uh, metallics, right, and chains and other of the stuff, and I'm going to use light belch and I want to go for a quite dark metal color, okay, and with that we are going to do uh, the other parts that I want to leave it in metal color, so this means, for example, I'm going to do all these, like, uh, this type of things that the armor of the room, okay, all these things, 
typical from the Terminator armors. They look like reinforcements of the armor plates. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do the spike things. This is spike that he has in some parts of the armor. And I'm going to do as well these rings that we have on the tube connections. And this type of pistons are uh, supports under the shoulder pads. Okay, we're going to do this also metallic. So we're going to paint different parts of metallic, and then once this is done uh, and dry, I'm back. So I have done all these metallic parts, you see inside of the corrugate uh, and yeah, here also in mean the corrugate inside of the tubes I was meaning. I have done also these things on the shoulder pads, uh, all the uh, like uh, this type of uh, structure that the Terminator armor has. And now I'm going to work with um, red, I'm going to use cone red. Okay, to use, uh, I, I want to do the cloth in red. I know that in the official paint job is not red, but I prefer it to do it red, okay? So I'm going to apply this, and I will do as well the red on the claw of the, uh, on the Aorus thing, right? We'll do the red here on this part of the armor, okay? To give it a different look, I did this in my first, Abaddon and I want to keep that look as well here in, in this one. When I mean the first Abaddon, I mean the Abaddon from the 90s. Okay, and now I will I will do one thing that is I will work this uh, to uh, to the to finish, right? I will work on the cloth. I will I will try to finish you now on the paint job. So I will do this one and then I will do the capes in the same way. Okay, so what I'm doing here I'm applying first the cone red. You can see that is white quite diluted. I think I will yeah just do it here but it's easier to do the cape. This is why I want to do the cape because then I can uh, leave it standing on the base and it's going to be easier. Okay, and you can see I'm just applying the base color. Cone red can cover very, 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 very easily. And black, as you can see here. I'm not gluing it to the base first because I want to have easy access to the cloth I'm painting now. Second, because the base has as well the torch and all the things, so I need to do the legs. Then, once the legs are done, I can glue it on the base. If not, I will have problems to have access to to some parts because we have the, we have all the elements, the broken wing and so on, that can interfere. You see, I have done this. Now, the first thing I will do, I will use um, Linus Height. Okay. Here we 
gaf voor veel schijnt. What I'm going to do with Runoscheid is to first determine the bottom of this thing. You can see I go quite heavy first. Now I will take a little bit of corn red. We want to soften this. like white blending. Okay, I want to give the bottom of the cloth this dirty look. I will use the same Runner's Guide to do the shading and here I'm going to apply it but first I will need to apply red and what I want to give this a shading here a shade here as well another shade this way here and now I remove the excess It's this one here. Like that. This can be quite a strong shade. The, the wrinkle or the fold is quite strong and no. But here is going to be, I have too much red still. So I'm just putting brown and removing the red. This bar has to be quite dark. Red to pull, okay. So we need to take a little bit more brown, pull it up, and now with red.
myself down on this. Then we want this to be right, right? You can see now the colors are matting quite nicely. start with the shades and then I will do the same on the back of this guy yeah, but I will do the other parts of camera and you can understand that the whole cape will be done in the same way so I'm just here showing how I do this one and the rest is going to be done similarly I'm going to take now Wild Rider Red it's quite orangey one and I will play with the uh, white blending to f uh, to play with the highlights. Now. Okay, keep using quite a big brush. Now what I will do is I'm going to apply the highlights. It's going to look very orange at the beginning, but my intention there is to understand where I have the high the highlights. Here, I want to highlight there and now with the red, take a little bit more of corn red. We do like that. We're going to do the same here. Here I'm going to do more provocative, so you can see I put a lot of orange now, especially on this part, and now it's uh, as I have my brush charge um, or load, sorry, with comrade, it's mixing. here this night transition here I will not do more highlights I will focus more on the top part Red, I mean corn red. Okay. Thing is, this is what you want to do. You do the same here. Let's do the opposite from bottom to up. Uh, this one. Here, there, there will be a shade as how this thing is formed. The brighter part should be somewhere there. I can even do something like that. So, the end is the part that is pointing out. And no, it's too harsh, of course. We go with the corn red on top and we glaze it a little bit. And now we can go like that. Let's make a small mixture here. Very thin. 
thin. And this is the difficult part here, that we are playing with double transition, right? The dirtiness of the bottom of the cloth plus the highlights. I'm going to do this. This shape has to join there. No, I'm going to work with this red. with a little bit of brown, very little, to help here on this transition. Okay, and this is how I will do the clothes. So I will do now the other parts of the clothes and I'm back for the next step. So I have work as you can see here as well, the inside of the cape. So here I go for a quite dark color, so this has to be assembled. The other part I will do it once it's assembled on the miniature, but the inside as will be difficult to reach, I just wanted to do. Here you see how it looks like the front as well, I hope you can see the back. And now I'm going to uh, do a wash on the gold. Uh, I will, I'm going to use Rayglan's, um, Rayglan Flay Shade. And I will apply this on all the golden parts. This will give very interesting reddish tone that I like a lot uh, on the gold. I think will will make uh, will give a lot of depth to the gold. And it will keep a little bit this brightness and bold color. Uh, I, and we are going to apply this on all the rims. I have I realized that I, I uh, the gold is I've been off in some areas this is not a problem because later on I need to do highlights and I will solve this uh, later on okay so but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply this regular flay shade on all the gold I'm not too concerned if I go on the black parts uh, I try to avoid uh, to go on the metal part so you have to be careful when you have to apply this next to a metallic thing Think, okay, so we are going to apply this on all these things. Okay, here I want to be careful not to go into the, the corrugate tube. Then, uh, yeah, we'll do as well this rim here. So we do all, all the all the gold parts. Okay, so and then we wait that this device before doing the next step. So it's important that I, when I do a wash, I really look forward that it divides correctly, right? You can see now that uh, here we have done as well a little bit before with the metallic. So, all starts getting, um, taking more shape and being more interesting. We will need to clean up maybe the gold here and there. So this is the way, the, the thing I'm going to do now. I'm going to work on the gold and on the metallic trim. So, and then if I do the legs at this level, I will glue it on the base, so I will be able to work easier with this thing. You can see, even in this base that is smaller, it's difficult to reach some parts of the inside of the leg. Okay, this is why I prefer to glue it later on. Using it to reach difficult parts, I always can detach it from this provisional attachment to the, this base. Okay, so I do that I with the device, and I'm back for the next step. Okay, this is how it looks like when we have uh, the, the, the 
the wedge half line. Now I'm going to work in the part that I was is the joints between the armor. To do that, what I will do first, I will apply a uh, grey color. Okay, we are going to apply downstone, so the medium tone, and then we are going to do a wash on, on these uh, things, right, to give some volume to this part. So we are going to paint this with downstone, all of these joint, armor joints. And once it's done, I will be back for to apply the wash. Okay. You can see we do here. Okay, and I will do all the different joints. This color covers very well on top of black. So you can go with uh, one thin layer should be enough, or very uh, two very thin layers. Downstone covers very well. If you don't have downstone, use any medium gray that you have. Not too light, not too dark, because we want to have some shade at the end. Okay, some kind of light. So I will do that. The same, and I'm back. One is fine. Okay, while the downstone is drying, I'm going to apply a ripper, that ripper, on the different tubes or wires he has around. Okay, um, and here what we want to do, we don't need to cover fully the black. I just want to create like a reflection or line, just to create some interest some color variation on these tubes and avoid that it's fully black, right? I go for this that is a little bit bluish to differentiate from the one that we applied before and if at the end it's too light we are going to apply anyway a wash with non oil okay we are going to do that I want to keep all these wires black on Abaddon. I was thinking first to do it like if they were veins in, in like a, a reddish fleshy color but I think in the case of Abaddon I prefer to go for something more uh, I would say it in a way traditional okay this way I'm applying now this this color Ripper Dark Reaper, so the same as the Dark Elder unit, sorry Dark Elder, the Craft War Elder unit. So we will do that, we apply on all the different wires, okay? So I will I keep doing that on all the wires. And I will be back for the next step. So we have done here different tubes and as well I applied the downstone on the top notch of this guy on the thing that he's wearing. And now I'm going to play red. Okay, this corn red, the same we use for the cape. And we are going to apply this on here and the handle of the sword. Okay, and on the hair. Because I want to apply now the noon oil as a wash and I need this color to be applied before doing the wash. Okay, so I do that. Here again, you want to be careful. Trying to have all the basic done before gluing it to the base then we will need to start working on highlighting and all the fine details okay you can see I like a lot the armor of this arm 
I, I do it here and then we are going to do also this here with the corn right, okay? So I do these two parts. I will also do the bell. Okay, I will do this part here as well. I forgot it to do it before and we are going to do it now, okay? Do this, this, this and the claw. Okay, I will do the claw in red as well. So I do that and I come back. Next step, I'm going to use Noon Oil, okay, and we're going to apply this on the metal parts, uh, almost everywhere, right? I will wait for the top notch to do it the last part because it was, I want to be sure that it dries, but by this way I put the red here, I want to do this part, and then we're going to do the spikes later on. Okay, I don't know if it's a good strategy to put the spikes on your own sword handle, but okay, the, he is Abaddon. Okay, we do this. I'm going to play there, and you can see now a little bit dark. And I'm thinking if at the end I will put Black Templar because I want this to look darker. So most likely we'll end up applying then Dark Templar. We are going to go through all the different tubes. Okay. Uh, this parts as well, although they will hide it. Okay, so we will apply this on all the metallic parts, all the grey parts, we have corrugate tube, tube, and yeah, we are going to apply it as well on the top notch, including this thing here. And this thing here, as I see clearly now, I will apply later on a black uh, Templar. Okay, so I will do that. I wait that this dries and I will be back when this has dry. So this is how it looks like once the wash has dry. Okay, you can see that the, all the colors are much darker. But I, at these joints I want to apply a darker color. So I'm going to apply now a templ um, black templar. Okay, and you can see that we have very nice uh, definition of the grid and we go quite dark that is what I wanted at the end okay so we apply black template here and I will apply I will finalize here the first part sorry the second part of this painting tutorial so we have done the first part that was the base and this is the second part that is just the base colors uh, for the or the base coats uh, for the um, armor and part of the other so in the next uh, chap in the next um, part of this tutorial, I'm going to start doing the highlights. Most likely we'll need uh, about two or three more parts, right? Because I want to go in detail. I want to dedicate one part to the face and another part to do the, the sword and other um, type of effects on the guy. We also need to do the schools and all the highlights. So you can imagine they still have so a lot of work here to do. Uh, we just have uh, done a little bit the black, the black we, we will need to do uh, some additional highlights as well. And yeah, and that's all for now. So please let me know what do you think so far on the paint job. Let me know what do you think about the color choices and how you look Abaddon now. Uh, please give a like if you have liked this video. Uh, keep uh, tuned, subscribe to my channel if you want to see um, how this, uh, the paint job and how this will evolve. But that's all for now, so this is all for part 2 on the painting tutorial of Abaddon. So I hope you have enjoyed this one, please give a like if it is the case, and as usual, thanks a lot for watching, and see you again later, bye!